are these offshore accounts legal that you analyzed? Yeah, I mean, it depends. So uh, these companies that offer shell companies and so forth, they reside in jurisdictions where they are abiding by the laws of, say, the British Virgin Islands or Cyprus or other places around the world. And you're right to point out that there's not anything necessarily illegal about that. But it does create a lot of problems. It leads to tax evasion. It, uh, these uh, offshore systems are often exploited by criminals to hide ill-gotten gains, corrupt politicians. Uh, and just, and, and as you put it at the top of the show, I mean, just the, the very, very wealthy uh, in, in moving money and hiding money in ways that the rest of us simply can't or don't tend to do. And as you noted in the article, it is interesting to note in the wake of the Panama Papers and the reforms and the scrutiny that came from that, that these practices are ongoing uh, by some of the people that you mentioned. And they're, one of those people, of course, is Russian leader Vladimir Putin. There's this headline um, in your piece saying, Secret Money, Swanky Real Estate, and a Monte Carlo Mystery. Explain those findings. So... This is a very fascinating story, and I think one of the more interesting stories to come out of this trove of documents has to do with a woman from St. Petersburg who was alleged to have had a secret relationship with Vladimir Putin in the early 2000s, in fact, to have had a child who was possibly fathered by Vladimir Putin and who had a very humble background, uh, no money in the family, no particular evidence of any financial means for her, but has become astonishingly wealthy ever since this relationship began. And what we found in the documents was evidence of a, uh, a multi-million dollar apartment that uh, she acquired in Monaco uh, on the Mediterranean, just within, a uh, shell company was set up literally a, almost exactly a month after her child was born. And we were able to trace this to a financial firm in Monaco that has done work with other Putin insiders. And so this is a case of how the Russian financial system works, how those who are close to President Putin uh, can accumulate significant wealth, and how they go about hiding it through shell companies uh, to try to ensure that, uh, that the public is never made aware of it. And what is the Kremlin saying about this reporting? We gave the Kremlin, we gave the Kremlin uh, um, ample notice, more than a week's notice that these stories were coming, uh, sent numerous emails seeking comment from um, the spokesperson for the Kremlin, and we have yet to get a single response or even an acknowledgement. Another prominent figure in your article is a headline about King Abdullah II of Jordan. This is what it says. While his country struggles, Jordan's King Abdullah secretly splurges. Walk us through what you found there. To me, this is one of the, the most important findings in the trove. Uh, King Abdullah is an important ally of the United States. Jordan gets billions of dollars from the United States and other Western governments. And while Jordan has been collecting this money, its ruler, King Abdullah, has secretly been purchasing lavish luxury apartments in the United States. The documents took us and were, allowed us to identify three cliffside compounds in Malibu uh, that, for, that he purchased through shell companies, using shell companies to hide these transactions for roughly $70 million over a three-year stretch. We found properties in London, properties in Georgetown, and the Georgetown section of Washington, D.C. He has been on a decade-long splurge in spending on lavish real estate at a time when his country and its economy have gone uh, downhill. There is significant unemployment in Jordan. Uh, wages have stagnated there. It's a, it's, a, it's a remarkable story because it gives us uh, direct insight into what the monarch has been doing with his money uh, while the kingdom he rules has struggled. And we just want to note the law firm representing King Abdullah told the Post uh, in your article, any implication that there is something improper about Abdullah's ownership of property through companies and offshore jurisdictions is categorically denied. Greg Miller, thank you so much. Uh, we want to again note CNN has not done its own analysis of the legalities here. CNN is reaching out to the Kremlin and representatives for the King of Jordan for comment.